Have you ever wondered where those super fast growing broiler chickens that dominate the markets come from? Like the famous Cobb 500 or the efficient Ross 708? Get ready, because the answer will surprise you, and today we are going to unveil the secret behind their origin. In this video, I will guide you through the fundamental crosses you can make at home to produce your own broiler chickens. Behind poultry genetics giants like Cobb and Ross, the two leading companies worldwide in the development of hybrid broiler lines, lies a key concept, the Cornish Cross. But what exactly is it? Generally speaking, the Cornish Cross represents the type of strategic cross that they have perfected to achieve those impressive results in chicken meat production. Traditionally, the basis of this success lies in the union of two breeds with complementary characteristics. And today we will focus on the heart of this process. The fascinating cross between a white Cornish rooster and a white Plymouth rock hen. This cross, which we will explore in depth in this video, is the pillar upon which the foundations were built to obtain chickens with remarkably fast growth and exceptional musculature. Over time, genetics titans such as Cobb Vantress and Aviagen, the mastermind behind the Ross brand, have taken this fundamental principle and elevated it to new heights through decades of rigorous genetic selection. Companies like Cobb Vantress have developed iconic lines such as the Cobb 500 and the Cobb 700, which are nothing more than ultra-optimized versions of the Cornish Cross concept, fine-tuned for even faster growth, superior feed efficiency, and unsurpassed meat yield. Similarly, Aviagen offers us the renowned Ross lines, such as the Ross 308 and the Ross 708. Like their Cobb counterparts, these hybrid chickens share that genetic heritage of the Cornish Cross, but with the innovations and patented genetic improvements by Aviagen. It is important to understand that, although both lineages descend from this type of cross, the Cobb and Ross lines present subtle but significant differences in aspects such as the growth curve at their different stages of development, the final carcass conformation with variations in breast size for example, the efficiency with which they convert feed into meat, and their adaptability to various farm management conditions. As producers, the choice between these lines becomes a strategic decision based on our specific needs, our production objectives, and the particular conditions of our breeding environment. So if you are interested in discovering the secrets behind broiler production and how you can start your own experience, get ready to dive into the fascinating world of the cross between the white Cornish rooster and the white Plymouth rock hen, the basis of much more than you imagine. The Cornish cross didn't just pop up overnight. Its history goes back to the early 20th century when an ideal chicken for meat production was being sought. The basis of this hybrid lies in two main breeds. The Cornish, or Indian game, originally from England was initially developed as a fighting bird. However, its breeders realized its exceptionally muscular and broad body conformation, especially in the breast. Although they weren't good layers or fast growing in their pure form, their potential to contribute muscle mass was evident. And the White Plymouth Rock this American breed was appreciated for its good growth rate, good overall size, and decent laying abilities. Its white plumage was also an advantage for meat production, as it resulted in a cleaner appearance. The discovery of the potential of their cross occurred by observing that the combination of the Cornish's musculature with the White Plymouth Rock's growth and size produced offspring with a significantly faster growth rate and excellent feed conversion. This initial hybrid laid the foundation for the modern Cornish cross we know today, although current commercial lines have been refined through decades of intensive genetic selection by companies such as Cobb and Aviagen. Productive qualities of the modern Cornish cross, Cobb and Ross. It's crucial to understand that when we talk about the productive qualities, weight gain, and growth, we are mainly referring to modern commercial lines such as the Cobb 500 and the Ross 708, which are the pinnacle of optimization of the original Cornish Cross concept. Exceptional weight gain and growth. This is the most distinctive characteristic. Modern Cornish Cross are designed to reach market weight, typically between 4.4 and 6.6 .6 pounds, in a remarkably short period usually between six and nine weeks. Their growth rate is exponential during this time, thanks to their genetics and proper management, balanced feed in the early stages. Excellent feed conversion. They are extremely efficient at converting the feed they consume into muscle mass. This means they require less feed per pound of meat produced compared to other less specialized breeds or crosses. Their body conformation, with broad breasts and well-developed thighs, results in a high meat yield in relation to their live weight. 
Egg production in modern Cornish Cross is practically nil at the commercial level. Their energy and development are directed almost entirely towards muscle growth. They are not considered laying birds, and their life cycle focuses on meat production. Due to their short life cycle for meat production, sexual maturity is not a relevant factor in their commercial management. They are generally slaughtered before reaching sexual maturity. Since they are rarely allowed to live to adulthood, talking about an average adult weight is not a standard metric in commercial production. However, if they were allowed to grow, males would be significantly larger and heavier than females, reflecting the influence of the Cornish breed on their structure. These birds tend to be relatively docile and have low levels of activity, especially as they gain weight. This characteristic also contributes to better feed conversion as they expend less energy on movement. It is important to note that by crossing a white Cornish rooster with a white Plymouth Rock hen at home, you will not obtain a chicken identical to the modern commercial Cornish cross, Cobb or Ross. Commercial lines are the result of many generations of specific genetic selection and controlled crosses by these companies. However, this homemade cross will produce broiler chickens with improved characteristics compared to the purebred parent breeds, showing faster growth and better carcass conformation than a pure Plymouth Rock, although perhaps not at the same extreme rate as a Cobb or Ross. Next, we will delve into the specific characteristics of the White Cornish Rooster and the White Plymouth Rock Hen. Understanding what each contributes to the offspring of this homemade cross for meat production. Characteristics of the White Cornish Rooster Robust and muscular body conformation. This is its most distinctive characteristic. Cornish roosters have a broad and deep body, with an exceptionally wide and prominent breast, as well as well-developed thighs. This structure is the main contribution to the good carcass conformation of their offspring. Compared to modern hybrids, the growth of pure Cornish is relatively slow. They do not reach market weight as quickly. Cornish hens, and by extension roosters do not directly influence laying, but the breed in general has this characteristic, are not known for high egg production. Their genetic focus is on muscle development. Cornish can be temperamental and even aggressive birds, especially the males. An adult white Cornish rooster can weigh between 8.8 .8 and 11 pounds. In the white variety, their plumage is completely white, without spots or feathers of another color. Characteristics of the White Plymouth Rock Hen They are good-sized birds, although not as muscular as the Cornish. They have a strong constitution and are adaptable to many adverse conditions. Growth is faster than the Cornish. Plymouth Rock chickens grow at a faster rate than pure Cornish, although not as fast as commercial hybrids. Plymouth Rock hens are known for being good layers of large brown eggs. This is a valuable characteristic that they transmit to their offspring, although in the broiler cross, egg production is not the main objective. Generally, this white Plymouth Rock breed has a calm and manageable temperament, like the other varieties of Plymouth Rock. An adult white Plymouth Rock hen can weigh between 6.6 .6 and 8.8 .8 pounds. Their plumage, like the Cornish, is completely white. Why the cross in this order? White Cornish rooster with white Plymouth Rock hen. Making the cross with a white Cornish rooster as the father and a white Plymouth Rock hen as the mother is the most common and recommended strategy for several genetic and practical reasons. Muscle contribution from the Cornish father. The white Cornish rooster contributes the genetics for superior muscle development and carcass conformation, broad breast and meaty thighs, to the offspring. As the male, his genetic influence on these growth and structure characteristics is dominant in the chicks. Fast growth and size contribution from the Plymouth Rock Mother. The white Plymouth Rock hen contributes a faster growth rate and good overall size to the chicks. In addition, her more docile temperament tends to positively influence the manageability of the offspring. Plymouth Rock hens are usually good mothers and contribute vigor and hardiness to the chicks, improving their survival rate and adaptability. By using a white Cornish and a white Plymouth Rock, the probability of obtaining chicks with white plumage is increased, which is preferred for meat production due to the clean appearance of the carcass. What does this specific order contribute genetically? Dominance of conformation genes. The genes responsible for the pronounced musculature of the Cornish tend to be dominant or semi-dominant. As the father, the white Cornish rooster has a higher probability of transmitting these characteristics to his offspring. The mother, on the other hand, contributes mitochondrial DNA to the offspring. 
A robust mother with good general health, such as the White Plymouth Rock, can positively influence the initial vitality of the chicks. The combination of the genes from both breeds results in a synergy, where the chicks exhibit a combination of the best characteristics of both parents, the musculature of the Cornish and the growth and size of the White Plymouth Rock. In addition, the F1 daughters will inherit a good ability to lay eggs from the White Plymouth Rock, although their production will not be as high since they have not been bred specifically for laying, as energy will be directed more towards muscle growth. What would happen if the cross were made the other way around? White Plymouth Rock Rooster with White Cornish Hen. While broiler chickens would be obtained, the result could be slightly different. Less emphasis on musculature. The influence of the Cornish's muscle conformation would be less pronounced, as the mother contributes half of the genes. Potentially slower growth rate. Although the White Plymouth Rock Rooster contributes faster growth than the pure Cornish, the strong influence of the White Cornish mother's moderate growth could slightly slow down the overall rate. Less predictable temperament. The influence of the White Cornish hen's stronger temperament could result in less docile chickens. Remember that the hen contributes more genetic information to the offspring. Lower hybrid vigor, potentially. In some crosses, the direction of the cross can influence hybrid vigor. The improvement in the characteristics of the offspring compared to the parents. I mean that crosses of the same breeds but in the opposite direction, such as a white Plymouth rock rooster with a white Cornish hen, result in chickens with less hybrid vigor than if the opposite cross were made. In short, the cross of a white Cornish rooster with a white Plymouth rock hen is carried out in this strategic order to maximize the inheritance of the excellent muscle conformation of the Cornish and combine it with the good growth, size, and docile temperament of the Plymouth rock seeking to obtain homemade broiler chickens with a good balance of these desirable characteristics. What would be the potential for crosses after the F1? I mean the F2 generations and beyond. If you decide to cross the F1 generation chickens with each other to produce a second generation, F2, and so on, you should expect the following. Greater variability. The most notable characteristic of subsequent generations is a significant increase in variability among individuals. The genes of the grandparents will recombine in various ways, resulting in a wide range of characteristics in the F2 chickens. Some may look more like the Cornish, others more like the White Plymouth Rock, and others will show unpredictable combinations. Decrease in hybrid vigor. Generally, generations after the F1 experience a decrease in hybrid vigor. This means that the overall performance in characteristics such as growth rate, feed efficiency, and carcass conformation tends to be lower and more inconsistent compared to the F1 generation. Reappearance of recessive characteristics. Characteristics that may not have been evident in the F1 generation, if they were recessive in one of the parents, may reappear in subsequent generations. Lower predictability. In general, subsequent generations are less predictable in terms of their productive characteristics. A uniform performance for broiler production cannot be guaranteed. Due to the decrease in hybrid vigor and the greater variability in subsequent generations, I do not recommend using the F1 chickens to cross them with each other if the main objective is the efficient and consistent production of broiler chickens. To maintain the advantages of hybrid vigor and obtain chickens with the desired characteristics for fattening, it is necessary to repeat the cross between the purebred parents, White Cornish Rooster and White Plymouth Rock Hen, in each production cycle. This ensures that the F1 generation with its associated benefits is always obtained. In summary, the initial cross, F1, called Cornish cross, offers a significant improvement for meat production compared to the purebred parent breeds. However, to maintain that advantage, it is crucial to understand the genetics behind the crosses and repeat the original cross instead of breeding subsequent generations. This information is vital for those seeking to produce broiler chickens consistently at home. For your success, fellow breeder, until next time.